Hey there, I'm Shama Maher, CEO of Scaling Retail. And I wanna chat with you about something that's really important to me. You know, over the last 10 years, I've had the opportunity to speak to over a thousand founders. I've spoken on stages in front of tens of thousands of founders by this point. And when it comes to understanding leadership and development and how founders are able to really become leaders of their organization, I have found that there are a few key areas and ways in which leaders have been able to do so effectively, efficiently, and honestly, with a lot of authenticity. Developing leadership skills is really the difference between someone who is a solo maker who just wants to make a product and do so as an independent contributor versus someone who really wants to build and lead a team, right? Someone who has a vision, someone who wants to create something into the world. Leaders are not just only coming from certain kinds of lineages, right? So leaders might come from a world of product development. You might have leaders who are coming from the world of marketing. You might have leaders who are coming from the world of finance. Whatever your lineage is, the concept of leadership within an organization is really the ability to be able to have team members and other people within a group be able to come to you, collaborate with you, see you as a position and as a point of authority, not because you're the person who's paying them, but because you're the person who's actually able to help them think cohesively about their work, help them understand meaning behind what they're doing, and being able to steer the ship in a way that is very 360 to move projects and people forward. Leadership is not just a matter of having a meeting once a week where you get your team together. It is truly in the ways in which you engage and interact as an authentic human um, on the day-to-day -day basis with everyone within your organization. So given how important leadership skills are, how important it is to be able to have vision, to be able to relate empathically to people, to be able to understand enough of how all the entire ecosystems have to be able to operate to make decisions and inspire to move people forward, dot, 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 how on earth do you end up creating and developing those skills? Right? That, I think, is ultimately uh, the best question. And so today I want to unpack a little bit about how you can start to develop your leadership skills on the go. You might already have a business. You might already have employees, but you might be a shitty leader. And what would a shitty leader look like? Well, a shitty leader is someone who shows up thinking that they don't have to give any direction and that employees and people should just know what to do. A shitty leader does not provide feedback. A shitty leader does not set expectations. A shitty leader does not actually listen to the people who are working for them and ask them how processes and things can be improved. A shitty leader leads from the top down and has no room to lead from the bottom up, does not have the ability to get their hands dirty, and does not have the ability to relate and empathize with their workforce in order to bring them along this incredible journey of executing a vision. Now, leaders are not always in the CEO position. You have leaders that are at the director level, leaders that are at the management level. And in fact, employees who are in neither of those categories can ultimately emerge as leaders when all of a sudden it's very clear that people in the workforce and their department are looking to them for guidance. So leadership is not just a tops down CEO suite type of um, attribute. Having leadership qualities can really permeate all levels. But for the purposes of our conversation today, leadership is really going to be discussed from the perspective of the CEO. How do you lead with integrity, with heart, and with vision in a way that's able to get your group to move to you over time? So I wanna give you a couple of do's and don'ts. You know, the first is just because you're paying these people doesn't mean that they technically owe you anything, right? I think too often early on leaders and CEOs think that they have to be you know, driving people so hard to get the most amount of them at every given moment, but they fail to understand the benefit of rest from a creative standpoint. Right? How on earth are you supposed to create good vision or produce the best work if your employees are quite simply overtaxed and maxed and they're living under a bedrock of stress? So how you choose to exude your leadership comes in terms of understanding not only your core competencies and how you show up every day, 
understanding where your weaknesses might be and being able to take those steps to be able to really address all of those things. So I'll give you an example. You know, one of the things that I tend to assign myself to is from a leadership style of quite what I like to call firm compassion. Right, firm in the sense of, you know, I have ideas and I'm firm and I will ultimately be making the decision, so I'm firm about that. But compassion in the sense that everyone who needs to have a seat at the table does have a seat at the table. Compassion in the sense that we need to keep our eyes on the bigger picture here. And compassion because we're all people at the end of the day. Being able to create a symbiotic relationship within your workforce requires you to have a sense of vision of what you want to create and being able to articulate to everyone, what is your mission, right? What is it that this entity is here to do? What is it this business needs to be able to achieve at the end of the year and at the end of the month, maybe in 10 years? So having those sorts of ideas on future progress is really gonna help you get your employees, your contractors all aligned, right? And those ideas might shift. So in terms of being a leader on the fly, if your vision changes, if there's a total shift, it's not just about you keeping those ideas to yourself. It's about actually bringing your team to the table and saying, hey, how might we be able to achieve this? What might we need to change? Right? As a leader, it doesn't mean that you have all the answers, but it means that you're able to source the answers from the right people on your team. So being able to rock back into that sort of idea of, hey, let me nurture my ideas and get into a collaborative environment whereby I'm ultimately making the final decision. Because as we all know, consensus decision making is a horrible idea. You do not want consensus decision making. What you want to do is to source the right ideas, give everyone who needs to be at the table the opportunity, and then ultimately rock back into your CEO position and make the right steps and decisions to help drive incremental change or massive change towards that business goal that you're striving towards. Now, what are other ways of looking at leadership strategies? Well, aside from just managing people, we also want to look at how you're showing up as a leader in your community, how you're showing up as a leader in the causes, in the neighborhoods, in the arenas that you most so dearly um, have asso associated yourself to in terms of vision and mission. Showing up externally to the world means having a certain level of authenticity in terms of what your own values are. Right? What do you value? What are the core charities and initiatives? How do you show up in those arenas? Right? What does leadership mean to you in terms of the world that we live in? That's very important for business because as we know, people look at CEOs as the celebrity CEO. Where is the authenticity in terms of how they show up? How are they espousing their values? It speaks dramatically in terms of how people will assess the brand. Even though we want to say that CEO and brand is different, these days CEO and brand is pretty synonymous. So guys, if you're interested in further developing your leadership skills, you're interested in getting coached through, through, through leadership development, please make sure to send me an email at hello at scalingretail.com, especially if you are a newfound leader, a newfound CEO on the fly who's never had to do that before. Why? Because guys, being a leader means getting in front of your own shit. It means being able to understand where you might be able to have opportunities for growth and where are the areas you actually excel in. You want to keep excelling as you start to build infrastructure systems and self-actualization self processes that get you closer to closing that gap. All right, guys, send me an email, hello at scalingretail.com. Cannot wait to find out what kind of leader you are help you cultivate a winning team, and ultimately a path to profitability and long-term success. Talk to you soon. Bye.